Mark chapter number 10, verse number 46. And we're going to read down through verse 52. Came to pass, or they, they came to Jericho, and as he went, this is Jesus, went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. How many of you know, we ought, just, we ought to just get this right right now. How many of you know whenever you go to heaven and meet blind Bartimaeus, yeah. it would be wrong to call him blind Bartimaeus? Because yeah, right. <laughs> blind Bartimaeus got healed. So uh, he said, th at this point, though, his name was blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. He sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Oh, I like his faith. He began to cry out. Amen. Amen. When he heard, he grabbed a hold. He heard Jesus was passing by. He didn't just, just sit over there and just wait and see if God and all his sovereignty would come by and do something about his blindness. No, when he heard, he reached out and grabbed a hold. That's what faith does. When uh, he heard, here now in uh, verse number 48, or no, excuse me, verse number 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, heal my blind eyes. Hmm? Well, isn't that what he wanted? Huh? Is that what he got? That's not a trick question. <laughs> isn't that what he wanted? Isn't that even what he got? That's what he wanted? That's what he got. But that's not what he said. Jesus, thou son of David, what did he say? Have mercy on me. Anybody in here ever needed mercy before? Mercy is for folks that don't have it all together yet. <laughs> mercy is not for whenever you did, you crossed every T and dotted every I on every verse in the Bible. You a humdinger. I'm telling you, humdingers don't need mercy. <laughs> but... But the rest of us need some mercy sometimes. <clears throat> mercy, he said, thou Jesus of, Na uh, he cried out, Jesus of Nazareth, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, he's crying out for healing. We don't know uh, all the details of his situation, but apparently he needed some, he, he needed not just healing, he needed some mercy. In other words, he might have got himself into this predicament somehow. How many of you know there's people, I've seen this, there's people that come into church, get out of, you know, get, 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 come, come get saved and come out of the world. And, and uh, whenever they come into the church, this could really be all of us, <laughs> but when they come into the church, I mean, there's a lot of stuff hanging on them that's just their own doing how many of you know just just if i hadn't have been out there sinning if i hadn't have been out there doing this and doing that all this stuff yeah i'm saved but all this stuff hanging on me whatever you name it i mean you could name a hundred different things oppression depression it's just everything you can think of messed up our lives messed up our marriages messed up our you know we, we didn't raise our children right and and uh you know just 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 it's our own fault no huh? you can't even blame the devil i mean he had a whole lot of help from us you know what i'm talking about the devil's not all that in a bag of chips he he can't just do stuff without co-op even without our cooperation even sinners you know sinners can even say no to the devil huh well now you do in case you didn't <laughs> they have a will doesn't mean that they can completely be free from everything but they can say no to a lot of stuff you know anyway so but uh have mercy on me you could have damaged your body because of a past lifestyle damaged your marriage damaged your family blew your brains with drugs ruined your liver with alcohol do we need to list anything else i mean we just know all this stuff out there all the all the heaviness all the torment all the oppression all the regrets all the all the all the all the 
because of past mistakes or maybe even mistakes after we got saved. Anybody ever? I, I know for me, I got saved and I, I didn't, I didn't uh, get it all together right away. Still don't have it all together, you know. And we need mercy. But I got good news for you. Go to Ephesians. Now, don't, don't lose your place here in Mark 10. But go to Ephesians. We know this about God. Something, let's just dig around in the mercies of God a little bit. Would that be all right? Just somehow or another. I was praying in the Holy Ghost, and this kept coming up. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll, I'll take some of this. I wanted to make sure it was for all of us, and, and it just seemed to keep coming this morning, so we're going to minister on this. This is chapter number, Ephesians chapter number 1. Well, you know Ephesians 1. Let's go to Ephesians chapter number 2. You know how it talks about we were dead in sins. You have the quick in chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, who were dead in sins. We lived according to the course of this world, the prince of the power of the air, spirit not worked in the children of disobedience. We had our conversation in time past. The lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, whereby nature the children of wrath, even as others. And so therefore it didn't go very well with us. <laughs> I added that part. But verse number four, but God. But God. Woo, glory to God. Yeah. But God, who is what? Rich, Rich in mercy. Rich. Tell your neighbor he's rich. You thought he was rich with gold streets. He is rich with gold streets, but he's also rich in mercy. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Rich in mercy. Say it out loud. He's rich in mercy. I'm looking for the verse. I don't have it up here right now. But the Bible calls him the father of mercies, plural. No, that didn't hit you like it should. In other words, we know about the mercy of forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not all he's, all the only area he's merciful in. He'll wash you of sin and cleanse you and fix all that, and then he'll start restoring all the damage. <laughs> oh, you know, how many of you know God does not want his people living with regrets because of the past? He wants, to, he wants to take all those things that we have regrets about and restore them, fix them, and make them as if they never happened. Come on now. Uh, there's, there's something better than just living with, you know, memory of how, what it, what I, where I messed up and what it would have been. God's the God of second chances and third chances. And four chances, four chan five chances. How, how long do you think God will go on your chances? Go to Lamentation. We'll find out how long God will go. <clears throat> Lamentation. The Lord, I, this, this just kept coming. I was praying in the Holy Ghost, and this verse kept coming up. And I'm telling you what, I got so blessed. Lamentation chapter number 3, verses 22, verses 22 and 23. It is the Lord's mercies. Now, let me, before we go any further, the word mercy or mercies and compassion are the same Greek or Hebrew word in the Bible. So when we talk about mercies, we're talking about him having compassion on us. <clears throat> So he said, it is of the Lord's mercies, compassion, because he's compassionate that we are not consumed. We're, it's because the Lord's merciful that we're not crispy critters. That we're, that, that we're still alive. That we got up with a heartbeat this morning. Our eyes opened whenever the sun came up. That's the mercy of God. You know, we grow a little bit, and we start getting the Word in us, and we start thinking, well, you know, it's just because of me. I'm doing the Word, and we know we have our part. But if, it, if the Lord hadn't been merciful on us to help us see that Word, we'd still be as dumb as that post right there. The Lord is merciful. He helps us. I mean, we have our part, but without Him doing His part, we'd be, we'd be just, we, we, we couldn't do nothing. We, we would be failures. We would be world champion failures at everything, marriage and everything. You just name it. We'd be, we'd be, we'd be, uh, we'd be Olympians. Yes, sir. 
we'd, we'd just be top notch at losing. You know what I'm talking about? Scallywags and losers. That's about all we'd be. <laughs> Amen. But it, we'd just, we'd die with no name, no influence, nobody around to be at our funeral. We, we would, the Lord is merciful. I said, the Lord is merciful. Hallelujah. But I, but, it, but I have my part, Pastor. I know you have your part. But you wouldn't even know your part. If the Lord wasn't merciful on, on you and merciful on me, I wouldn't know my part. Thank God for his help. So we find here, back in Mark chapter number 10, that this blind Bartimaeus, he cried out for healing. Let's read the rest of it. He cried out and said, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he charged, uh, many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus said un, uh, answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that thou should, or, or that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Said that's what he did want. But he didn't say that. He cried out for mercy. And Jesus answered and said, or Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith, oh, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Isn't that right? And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus in the way. Faith. His faith. Well, what, what did he have faith in? <clears throat> huh? What, what did he cry out for? Huh? Mercy. He had faith in the mercies of God. God wants to do that in, in many lives this morning. He wants to develop, you to develop faith in his mercies Amen. faith in his word yeah but whenever you come short and you find I haven't really been doing it I've been out there doing my own thing I didn't care they weren't paying attention I was I was dumb I was whatever come on. Yes, sir. you know carnal and distracted and we get in trouble for it anybody ever got in trouble for it <laughs> yeah God wants us to have faith in his mercy Amen. I'm not talking about just living like we want to and, and just saying, Lord, do this for me anyhow while I continue to do my thing. No, I'm talking about running back to God and saying, Lord, there's, I messed up. I messed up. Forgive me. I, I'm getting in trouble for it. How many of you know God, that God's best is not that we learn the hard way by having tests? And, you know, t tests and trials are not always because of being out of fellowship with God. But I mean, you can have tests and trials because you're out of fellowship and doing your own thing. And, and God wants us to learn to not have to have a, 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 uh, a beaten by, from the devil, you yeah, know, come on, come on. before we run back to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's something better than that. Yes, but, yes. but you can learn that way. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Somebody said, that's a good school. I learned well. Well, yeah, but the tuition's real high. And it's dangerous. Very dangerous. You don't want to be just, just uh, you know, living like you want and saying, well, God will just bail me out. No, you want to just stay as close to God as you can, walk in the light you, you have. And, but but uh, if you find yourself, you know, having messed up, he doesn't want us to just sort of resign ourselves to the consequences for the rest of our lives. That God is a God of restoration. <laughs> yes, he is. Somebody needs to thank God for it. And like blind Bartimaeus, God wants us to have faith in the mercies of God. Amen. I'm not planning on living on them, but if I need them, I've got faith in them, in, in his mercies. All right. Now let's go back here to Lamentation. Let's see how far his mercies go. Let's go back. We were reading that and we didn't finish it. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Say consumed. Because his compassions, that's the same thing, mercies and compassions, fail not. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. That's the part that came up in my spirit. I was praying in the spirit. That came up in my spirit. Let's keep on reading. It's the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. Because of his compassion, his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Whoo, glory. You, somebody said, I ran out of all yesterdays. It's a new day. His compassions fail not. Now, now, I don't know if I, I'm hearing the shout, and I, I, I want to hear here. If you look up the word consumed, first, first, first part of the verse, the Lord's mercy is that we're not consumed. Circle consumed. And then, because his compassions fail not, circle fail. If you look up the word consume and the co- word fail, both of those words in the Hebrew mean identically the same thing. <clears throat> let's let's look, listen to it just a minute. You all listening to me? And so both of them mean to use up so that they run out or they're all gone. In other words, you, you, it's all spent. It's all gone. Sort of like money. You ever used up your money and it's all gone? Till the next paycheck or whatever. That's what that word means, to consume or fail. It says they consume, uh, they, they fail not, but we're talking about the word without the not so far. The, the, words means, the word consume and fail means the identical same thing. It means to use up so that they run out and it's all gone. In other words, there's not, we, we spend it all, it's all gone. But what he's saying is you can't use up all the mercies of God. You can't do it. So that God is finished giving mercy. You can't do it. Because he said his mercies fail not. They fail not. Amen. He'll never say, I'm done. My mercies are are all spent up. I don't have any more. You've exhausted all my reserves of mercy, and I just don't have any left. Huh? Because there are always still more of God's mercies left. If I read that verse right, I'm not adding anything to that, am I? There are always more left. Ooh, yeah. If there's more of his mercies left, there's still more of his blessings left for you. You've not used them all up either. But, 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 but uh, you don't understand. I've failed so many times. Yeah, and you don't understand. You cannot exhaust his mercies. Glory. His mercies never come to an end. Amen. And what the devil brings into our lives doesn't bring us, doesn't have to bring us to an end. Notice what he said. It's by his mercies that we're not consumed. What does that mean? Come to an end. We are no more. Huh? Are, we, are, are you paying attention? Yes. We're, we're just looking at the meanings of these words. Let me say it again. Because we've not consumed all of his mercies, all that the devil has done has not and will not consume us. Yes. Will not come to an end. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the devil does will not bring us to our end. Uh, the, the problem, let me tell you what the issue is here. The issue is people stop receiving his mercies. I said they stop receiving his mercies. Am I in the right room? They start, they start getting condemned that they've failed so many times. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, the devil starts selling them a bill of goods. He reminds them how often they've failed. Amen. And they begin to believe that they're not worthy of any more mercies. So they stop receiving his mercies. But that's not an issue of God running out of mercies. That's an issue of man failing to receive any more mercies. I, I get shocked sometimes at the mercies of God. <laughs> Come on now. But see, you need, to, you need to have the kind of faith that shocks people. The kind of faith in His mercies that people get shocked when they think 
Boy, I'm telling you what, he's been a scoundrel. All right, come on. Come on. That dirty rat, yeah. they don't deserve anything. They deserve to be judged. Come on. Come on. Come on. Everybody's ready for the fire to fall, you know? Everybody's standing back and just watching, saying, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this. And you, you get faith in the mercies of God and cry out for mercies, and God delivers you and raises you up out of that. And all the Pharisaical, yeah. all, the, all the religious, yeah. you know, do-gooders. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And here you are running your race, blessed. <laughs> because of his mercies. Yeah. That's the kind of faith we need to have. The kind of faith in his mercies that just never quits believing he's a merciful God. And he's still got more for me. Come on now. I said, come on now. But see, if we start getting condemned that we've failed so many times and start listening to the devil as he starts telling us how many times we've failed, we begin to believe we're not worthy of any more mercies. And in those cases, it's not God's mercies that have been all used up. It's that we have failed to receive them. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about? So the devil's able to bring an end to us receiving and the trial brings that person to an end. But it wasn't God that ran out of mercy. It was the enemy that took them out and got them all condemned. Condemnation, just mark this down. It's one of the greatest enemies of your faith you will ever face. Condemnation, the greatest enemy of your faith. You'll never have a bol bolstered, uh, uh, a strong faith that reaches up and receives if you are condemned, living under a cloud of guilt and shame and because of the past. All that is is a failure to have faith in the blood. I said that's a failure to have faith in the blood. And that's another way of saying a failure to have faith in His mercies. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll look at that in a few minutes. We'll get to that. But are you enjoying this right now? See, all these things are a faith issue. A lot of things come back to a faith issue. Amen? It always does. Listening to the devil talk to you will consume up all your faith, and you won't have any more faith to bring to God's never-ending mercies. When I say listening to the devil talk to you, I'm talking about him reminding you of how, how short you have come, where you should be, what you have not done, what you have failed to do. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> we've, all, we've all become acquainted with that accusing voice. Yes. There is, the Bible says over in Revelation 12, 11, there's a, a, the, the accuser of the brethren. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He'll never congratulate you. You'll do things that please God to the utmost. And the devil will go, yeah, but... He doesn't have any encouragement in him. He doesn't have any, you know, anything to... to B boost your faith in him he's always trying to tear you down tear you down tear you down tear you down tear down your faith that's just the way he is he's a he's the accuser of the brethren but the bible said we overcome him by the blood of the lamb i know we're just reminding you of what you already heard but boy it's good to be reminded isn't it we overcome him by the what the blood of the lamb and that's there's not a period there is there and and the word of our testimony in other words we're talking about what the blood has done for us we're talking about it you ought to talk a lot about the blood talk a lot about the blood talk a lot about the blood be 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 mouthy about the blood be outspoken about the blood when the devil's yakety yak yak, you get out, you get your words to, to, talking about the word. Talk, you got to have faith in the mercies of God. Somebody said, I don't have much faith in the mercies of God. There's a whole series on it on the, on the brick. There's, or what do we call it? What do we call it? The vault. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Just go get. Yeah. Hallelujah. We preached on the mercy of God for weeks in this church. Yes, Praise the Lord. Hey, don't. Don't get mad at me for getting excited about this because I'm not all that I am because I'm all that. 
There's a lot of things in my life because of his mercies endure forever. <laughs> so if I get happy, don't you, you just don't bother me, all right? Man, what I I I, I want to wait to heaven till I see these videos, but I want to see some videos that would would have been. I don't want to see them right now, <laughs> and, and, unless I can handle them. <laughs> but there might be some of them I don't think I can handle. What would have been if God hadn't been merciful on me? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say I'm developing faith in His mercies. See, the fact that mercies is plural means there's more than just mercy on our sin. Isn't that right? There's, there's mercy on our bodies, mercy on our brain and our heads and our families and our, the consequences of our mistakes. Amen. Isn't that good news? Those are all things in the mercies of God. And we're to have faith enough to not run from God whenever we've messed up, but come running to Him and call out, like, like blind Bartimaeus, call out for mercy. <laughs> Amen. You know, in the court of law, they're going to say, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, whatever. You say, if you stood in the court of law and said, I plead for mercy, they'd say, you can't do that. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. But, but guess what? At the throne of grace, yeah. Yeah. you can do that. Yeah. Amen. You can do that. <clears throat> the Bible says that the blood of Jesus, which, by the way, Jesus took to the heavenly holy of holies. He presented on the altar before God. God lives ever mindful of the blood because it's before him constantly. And Jesus' blood was offered up there. But the Bible says Jesus' blood speaks of better things than Abel's blood. Yes, yes. I know we've shared on this. On. So good. On. But boy, it's, it, just, it just refreshed me so much last night, just meditating on it. It speaks. Say it out loud. It speaks of better things than Abel's blood. What did Abel's blood? Remember Abel, Cain killed Abel? Remember that? And God said whenever he came to talk to Cain, he said, uh, where's your brother? Well, I don't know. I'm... I'm not my brother's keeper, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, his blood's crying out from the ground. Remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, In other words, God heard his blood, Cain's yeah. blood, I mean, Abel's blood talking to yeah. him. God, God heard the blood speak. Yes, sir. What, did it, what was it saying to God? If Jesus' blood speaks something better than Abel's, Abel's, because Jesus' blood speaks of mercy. Yes. Go to Romans chapter number three. We'll look at that. Amen. While you're turning there, I'll just quote this. Jesus' blood speaks of mercy. It, uh, it, it will read in the uh, third chapter here that <clears throat> Romans chapter number 3. Let's go ahead and read it now. I was going to wait, but Romans 3 says in verse number 25. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Well, let's, let's read it in the King James first, and then we're going to read it in the Amplified. King James, whom God hath set forth, Jesus, talking about Jesus, to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare the right, the, his righteousness from the remission, or for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Now he's uh, set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Now, King James says that, but listen to the Amplified. Whom God hath put forward before the eyes of all as a mercy seat. Now, wait a minute. Where did he get that? If you look up the word propitiation in the King James, that's what it means. A sacrifice that propitiates or restores man to favor, has mercy on him and restores him to favor. Jesus' blood was, was the sacrifice that restored us to favor and gave us mercy. Brought us mercy. Hallelujah. Remember what he said over in Ephesians? But God. Remember we were in sin, bound and all that. But God who is rich in mercy. <laughs> See, he's talking about why God did what he did when we were yet sinners. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. You think he ran out of mercy? Well, we got saved now. He wants us to be, you know, live right. Well, he wants us to live right, but he knows we still need more mercy. That's why it's new every morning. 
while we're learning. <laughs> while, I said, while we're learning. Yeah, while we're learning. You ever seen a child learn to walk? They take one step, and boom, down on their little bottom. Do you get them up and spank them? What's wrong with you? You're a sleigh maker. Walk. No, you're merciful. Yes, sir. In fact, that first step, you're trying to get it on video. Ooh, look at that. That's the way God is. He's not, well, you're a Christian now. You know what to do now. You didn't do it. You, did to, you took one step, spank. No, no, no. You, God saw you take that one step, and he, did, he does what we do. Yay! And here you are, back where you were on the ground. You did the word two days. Yeah, yeah, come on. Plunk back down. Yeah, God goes, on. yay. <laughs> but wait a minute. You're back where you were. Yeah, I know. But God said, yay. Come on. Yes. I'll give you more mercy while you're learning. Come on. Yes. While you're learning. I'm still learning. I've come a long ways, but I'm still learning. <laughs> So uh, he said, let's go back to the Amplified, but uh, who God hath put forward before the eyes of all as a mercy seat. Now, if you know anything about the Old Testament, that's drawing on Old Testament terminology. That, remember, he told them to make the, first the tabernacle, then the temple, and it was, had an outer court, an inner court, and then the Holy of Holies. And in the Holy of Holies was the Ark of the Covenant, and that was called the mercy seat. Yes. You remember that? Yes, sir. And... Uh, the reason it was called a, it, it would have been a judgment seat, but the high priest went in there once every year and put blood of an animal on that altar, turned a judgment seat into a mercy seat. Well, the heavenly holy of holies, Jesus entered in with his blood. The Bible says it in Hebrews very plainly. He, he took his blood into the very holy of holies in heaven, and he put his blood in on the altar before God, and his blood is speaking something better than Abel's. Abel's blood, Abel's blood said an injustice has been done, and vengeance must be paid. A penalty must be given out. Jesus' blood says a injustice has been done but the the blood of Jesus speaks of mercy because Jesus took that penalty yes, yes. that's why that blood was shed because he took that penalty so when that blood is before the father it's speaking something different than Abel's blood Abel's blood said vengeance must be given justice must be done Jesus says blood says in the heavenly holy holy justice has fallen on Jesus and now mercy can fall on all who come to the father through faith in the blood that's why he said here his blood the Amplified brings out this statement. Propitiation uh, means a mercy seat in the, in the Greek. Let's read the Amplified. Whom God hath put forth before the eyes of all as a mercy seat and propitiation by His blood. The cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to, receive, to be received through faith. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Can we paraphrase this? Yes. Through faith in the blood, we have a mercy seat. Yes. Or through faith in the blood, we can get mercy. Yes. But I messed up. Yeah, that's what the blood's for. It's for people that messed up. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's for people who messed up. Yes. Now go over to Exodus 25. <clears throat> Just a little Old Testament reference concerning this mercy seat. Anybody need this this morning? Yes, oh, yeah. Tell your neighbor we're developing faith in the mercies of God. 
Amen. I don't want to have to live on it, depend on it. I want to live on doing the word. But, but boy, I don't, want to, I don't want to drop this. No, 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 no. How many of you know this is why we want to be people who show mercy? Because when it comes time we need it, <laughs> we want to have a rich supply. We have sown it, we reap it. Now, I'm talking about with other people, other people giving us mercy. Now, Psalm, what did I say? Exodus 25, verse number 22, God said this, There I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. From between the two cherubims, if you know how this Ark of the Covenant was made, it had two golden cherubims, that's the angels, with wings stretched out touching one another. From between the two cherubims, which is upon the Ark of the Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant we call it, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So now I want you to see the first part. I will meet with thee, I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. Now listen, <clears throat> I will meet with thee and I will commune with thee. Now, that's talking about what he referred to back there in Romans 3, 25, right? <clears throat> so, because of the blood, he said, that's where you get mercy. It's a mercy seat. That's where you go to get mercy. But that's also, notice he said, I'll meet with thee and I will commune with thee. So, anytime you go to God and have a meeting with Him, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? We're going to meet with Him, talk with Him, right? Anytime we come to God, we need to come through the blood. Through the blood. Don't come claiming, I did this, I did that. I know Brother Hagin said years ago, and I never forget it. He said he pastored all those years. He said it seemed like, it seemed like pe people get saved, just get into the church. <clears throat> it seemed like they received a lot easier than people that had been in the church 20, 30 yeah. years. Yeah. He said the reason was is because the ones that first came in, yeah. Yeah. they knew that their song was, I'm just coming like I am. And, uh, you know, like that old song, there's this old song that says, uh, just as I am. Yeah. Without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. They knew they didn't have any merits on their own. You know, <laughs> they just come pleading mercy. Amen. Believing in God's mercies. But after being in church for 20, 30, 40 years, well, I do this and I do that. Hey, you still need mercy. You still are healed because he's merciful. You still get bailed out because he's merciful. I'm not saying don't do the word. You know, you know what I'm talking about. But you, we walk in all the light we have, but yet right on the other hand, still, if it wasn't for his mercy, none of it would work. And we wouldn't even know how to make it work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, we start progressing in the things of God, and, and we grow, and let's, let's take the area of prosperity. We keep on increasing and so forth, and we're able to give bigger, and, you know, maybe somebody pays off the church building or something like that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know why you were able to do that? You got born again. You were broke, busted, and disgusted. But you know why you're able to do that? Because He's merciful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't, don't come asking for a front row seat because you paid the church off. It's not all you, it's because of his mercies. He showed you how to do it. If he hadn't have shown you how to do it, oh, I'm preaching to somebody. So when you come, you just say, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Look what he enabled me to do. Oh, his good and his mercies endure forever. I was born again, all messed up, you know, didn't, didn't know how to add two plus two. <laughs> Here I am paying the church building off. Thank God for his mercies. <clears throat> Thank God for his mercies. 
Remember whenever they went out to the uh, battle, remember there in Second Chronicles 20, they had three armies come against them greater than themselves, and, and they said, you know, the, the Spirit of God moved and said, you don't need to fight in this battle, set yourself, stand you, send the singers out front. Yeah. You know? So they put the fr- singers out front, and they sang, for the Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. And they kept saying, the Lord is good. See, that's what you need to be talking all the time about His mercies. And uh, the Bible says when they started calling on the mercies of God and speaking of the mercies of God and confessing the mercies of God and singing about the mercies of God and praising about the mercies of God, that power was released. Angels were dispatched. And what they couldn't do, <laughs> they, they, got, they got something that they weren't able to do. Why? Because they made much of the mercy of God. They just kept talking about the mercy of God. Is this sinking in today? Glory. Praise the Lord. Why are you where you are today? Well, I believe God and so forth. Yeah, without the mercy of God, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even have known where to learn about the faith. You wouldn't even know to show up on Sunday morning. You. Where we are is because of the mercies of God. Glory. Glory. That mercy seat in the Old Testament was a physical location. In the New Testament, the mercy seat is anywhere there's faith in the blood of Jesus. You don't have to go to a building today. Isn't that right? It's anywhere there's faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. One of the first things that, one of the first benefits of faith in the blood is restoration to fellowship with with God. Isn't that right? And so the moment you exercise faith in the blood, that will be when you have a meeting with God. But I've messed up. Put some faith in in the blood of Jesus. Put some faith in that mercy that that blood speaks of. As soon as you do, you're going to have an encounter. Because faith brings people into encounters. You're going to experience something that you didn't deserve, you didn't earn, you weren't in line for. Amen. Somebody said, how'd you get that? Not without blood. (laughs) The Bible said the priest used to go into the Holy of Holies, not without blood. Remember, the, the history says, I don't know, you know, it wasn't in the Bible, but it, history tells us and, and tradition tells us they'd put a rope around that high priest's ankle so in case he didn't do everything right, they'd pull him back out because he's going to die in there. That's the presence of God, and he's a sinful man. But he's going in there with the blood of animals, which, which in the Old Testament covered sin. Didn't, didn't purge the conscience, but it covered sin. And so he went in there not without blood. Somebody said, how'd you get that? Not without blood. How'd you stay alive through that? Not without blood. Not without mercy. (laughs) Some of you looking at me like this isn't a good sermon, and I know it is. I'm not talking about it. I'm not taking any credit. The Holy Ghost started moving on me and sharing this with me. Not without blood. How'd you get that? How'd you get through that? You messed up. You, you destroyed this in your life, that in your life. What happened? It's because of blood. It's because of mercy. Because of mercy. And there's going to be folk. You, you know, blind Bartimaeus had people all around him to tell him, shut up. You messed up. Shut up. But he, had, he said, I'm not shutting up. I got faith in the mercy of God. I got faith in the mercy of God. And you're always going to have a bunch of Pharisees around you. They better not be in this church. But there's going to be Pharisees around you that are going to say, you messed up. Now, you just, you made your bed hard. You're going to sleep on it. Well, if you don't have faith in the blood, yeah. But the blood will soften that bed. You know <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Some of you have been around too long and you think you're all that. And you don't know how to shout about mercy anymore. There, the Bible says mercy, this is James 1, mercy rejoices against judgment. 
In other words, mercy delights to bless whenever judgment is due. Mercy. God's a merciful God, and He loves. The Bible says He, he doesn't have any, de- any pleasure in the death of the wicked. It says He delights in mercy. When people uh, are, whose, whose uh, lives are, are, are destroyed or whatever happens, uh, you know, just t- totally messed up or whatever happens, uh, because of their own wrongdoing, because there is a sowing and reaping law in the earth. Yes, there is. But God doesn't get any delight in that. That's right. No, sir. When people mess up and they get, they, they get into a whole lot of trouble because of it, he has no delight in that. And if they just put, turn and put a little faith in his yeah. blood and put a little yeah. faith in his mercy, yes. the Bible said mercy rejoices yes. Amen. against judgment. It's looking, God's looking for places, ways to bail people yes. out. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, he's looking for ways to do it. So with faith, in other words, when the devil, when you've messed up, when the devil's yakety yak yak, the accuser of the brother, he's yakety yak yak, he's saying all that he's saying, just trying to, really, he's not, he's not just trying to harass you, he's trying to undermine your faith. It's all about faith. He's trying to rob you of your faith, rob you of your faith in God's mercies and in the blood. And second of all, he's trying to deny you of the bailout or the the mercy or the blessings. He cannot just keep you from them, but he can talk you out of them if you listen and try to tell you you're not worthy. You're just going to have to live, uh, you know, beneath what you could have had. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, he's trying to deny you. But don't be denied when you've missed it. Put your faith in the blood of Jesus. I said put some faith in the blood of Jesus. When you apply the blood by faith, the devil will be the one denied. You need to learn to deny Satan. Not be denied the blessings of God. You need to deny him what he wants to do in your life. Yeah, you he wants to keep you without faith. He wants to keep you, so you know, condemned. He wants yeah. to keep you yeah. and, and say it's too late. You messed up. Yeah. Now, don't misunderstand me. It can be too late to get faith. Yeah. Yeah. But it's new, not, God's not saying it's too late. I don't have any more mercy. That's not the issue. The, some people get denied because they waited too long to get faith. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. So it's, it's too late in that sense, but not because God said it's too late. Right. It's only too late to get faith. People don't have the, 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 the time because maybe something is life-threatening or something like that, and, they've, and, and so they don't, have, they don't have that kind of faith, and they don't have time to get that kind of faith. Because yes, you can't just turn on faith and have a whole bunch. Come on, come on, that's right. It takes time to hear these kinds of messages and, and get built up. But listen, it doesn't take a long time. If you put forth a wholehearted effort toward it, and don't just play games, but wholehearted. You jump in with both feet. You can pass, you can pass up. You can get to where you need to be. Get there real quick. Glory. Because you need faith to tap into what I'm talking about. Clearly, it's not God who's saying, well, you know, I don't have any more because we already read there. His mercies can't be consumed up. They can't be spent out. They can't be, you know, but, but uh, you can see the difference between what I'm talking about and people saying God's out of mercy. Praise the Lord for the truth. So don't you be denied. You deny the devil. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Now let's just uh, wrap this up by looking at this. Hebrews, let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. Let's try to save some time. Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews 11. I'm telling you, some of the people in the Bible who were used the most when God got them, when He found them, 
they were a mess. <laughs> Take Paul. Woo-hoo. He was messed up. He thought it was his duty to kill people. Whew, glory. David. You know, we think David, he's a mighty man of God. Yeah, and he, he, he had sex out of marriage and killed a guy so he could get somebody else's wife. You know, those aren't the front row kind of Christians. You know what I'm talking about? Those are, those are scallywags. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, Hebrews 11. Did you find Hebrews 11? I'll tell you, there's hope for all of us. There's just hope for all of us. Hebrews 11, verse 28. I want you to see... Remember this whole chapter about faith? Hebrews 11, chapter about faith. Look what it says. Through faith. This is another way that somebody used their faith. This is talking about Moses. Moses kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Ah, now, now you remember back there in Egypt whenever the death angel was passing through, they put blood on the le- mantle and what's that doorpost, you know, and all that? Yeah. And uh, when the angel, the death angel, that's, that there is a spirit in the spirit realm called death. Death is not an angel from God. Death, death is the last enemy that will be put underfoot. And when that death angel went through uh, Egypt, you read it very carefully, it was not the angel of God. It said that God, the, the Lord hovered over their houses when he saw the blood. The word hovered over there. And then and, and the death angel passed over passed over that house where the blood was there was protection and and that's what Moses it says here through faith say faith Faith. he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them so when that when that death went through you remember all the firstborn of all the Egyptians even their cattle the firstborn of everything firstborn of all the children and all they all were were destroyed that night why was that why did that not happen in Israel because they followed the instructions killed a lamb put that that lamb represented the blood of his blood was shed and then that blood represented the lamb of Jesus I mean Jesus the lamb of God that was slain from the foundation world and that blood they were looking forward to the blood of the lamb and and in type I mean, if they could get this in type, we can get this in reality. They were, pro- everything, everything under the blood was protected. Everything under the blood was protected. Now, let me ask you a question. Were the Egyptians sinners? Let me ask you another question. Was there any sin in Israel's camp at that time? You know there was. You can't put 10 people together, (laughs) even in church today. You know, there were people that slept with somebody else's wife the night before. Don't look at me sanctimonious like that. You know there was sin in Israel's camp, but they got under the blood. (laughs) they didn't deserve that right neither did we but we got under the blood they deserve that was a scallywag I like that word this morning that was a scallywag adulterer right there he deserved to die but he yeah he did but he got under the blood he got under the blood and everything under the blood that night was protected (laughs) praise God this doesn't make you shout you just don't have any shout in you but notice the way the verse starts out is so powerful I'm trying to quit we're going to get out of here through faith that's the whole thing right there through faith he Moses kept the Passover now notice and the sprinkling of blood now if you read through the Bible just back up a chapter you're in the no back up to uh, the ninth chapter Hebrews 9 look at verse 19 through 21 
For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he, he took the blood of calves and of goats. Remember, those are all types of the, of the blood of Jesus. Uh, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled. Circle that. He took the blood and sprinkled both the book, of the, uh, the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which, is, which God has enjoined unto you made binding the Weymouth translation says or ordained Laubach says ordained this is the blood of the testament which he has made binding or ordained Uh, and Moses moreover he sprinkled with uh, the blood both of the tabernacle and all the vessels of the uh, ministry circle the word sprinkled I want you to notice and then you can go back to verse 13 look at verse 13 for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified through the purifying of the flesh, circle sprinkled, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit without, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience? Yes. Yes. See, back then it just covered them. But the blood of Jesus goes deeper than that. It doesn't just cover our sin. It clean. It goes all the way down into our spirit and takes out all the guilt. Purges our conscience that's that nagging voice of accusation that tries to keep saying you messed up you messed up you're guilty you don't deserve any blessings the blood of Jesus goes all the way down there and purges all that to where you you open up like a flower in the sunshine to the blessings of God and you say father I'm worthy all that sense of guilt is gone I'm telling you what, there's some folk in here, you've been living under condemnation. You don't even know it. There's been that yakky the yak yak for a long time. You need to get knowledge of the blood and put some faith in the blood and put, and, and notice the word he kept saying sprinkled. He kept sprinkled. He kept sprinkling. There's another word you need to use whenever it says sprinkled. Every time you see that, in fact, write it in your Bible, write applied. The blood shed is not enough. It had to be applied shedding that lamb's blood the day before the Passover out in the backyard shedding that animal's blood was not enough it had to be applied and how did Moses apply it through faith through faith through faith through faith faith. you say I've messed up through faith I plead the blood I call for mercy. Back then they applied it with a hyssop. That's just an old, that's just a bush out in the, they just go out and get a bush. It was kind of brushy and they could, they could dip it in that blood and apply it. That, that was just a, hyssop's not important. That was just something, that's like a paintbrush. That's what that all was. But the important thing was that it was applied. You could have the blood of that, that lamb in a bow in the back of the yard and that death angel still come in there and destroy the firstborn because it wasn't applied. See, God's, Jesus' blood shed was not enough. You've got to apply it. You've got to apply it. You've got to take the paintbrush of your tongue and start saying something about the blood. Start saying something about the blood. Say, but I'm so unworthy. Start saying, he has remitted all of my sin. And his blood through, the, through faith in the blood has provided me a mercy seat. And where I should get judgment, I've come for some mercy. Come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need come on somebody shout again praise God for the blood thank God for the blood but that's not enough it's got to, we got to have some faith in it we got to start saying I believe like blind Bartimaeus he used faith in that blood he used faith in the mercies of God people tried to tell him to shut up he said no I got faith I got faith Forget about the people around you that think you don't qualify. Think they're more sanctimonious than you, more self, self-righteous than you, and they think they've got it all together, and you, lowly scallywag, don't. So you got to pay the penalty. But if you got faith in the mercy of God, you'll pass them up. You'll pass them up. They'll be back there in their self-righteous stew, 
trying to earn the blessings of God and you're saying mercy, mercy and you're taking off. Stand with me to your feet. I did it. I preached myself happy. I'm eating, I might need to go to lunch with somebody just to preach it again. I just thank God for mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. And God is rich in mercy. He's loaded with it. He's so loaded, if you didn't even use up, you know, 10% of it yesterday, maybe yesterday was one of your better days, you know. <laughs> they only used up 10%. They're new this morning anyhow. And you got all that you didn't use yesterday, plus all that came new this morning. I think you're going to make it. I think you're going to make it. I, in fact, I know you're going to make it. If you got any faith at all in you in the mercies of God, you're going to go far. You're going to go far. But I don't deserve it. See, that's what we're trying to get out of you this morning. You're right, you don't deserve it. But see, the blood is for things that we don't deserve. We do not deserve a lot that we get, but we didn't get it because we's all that. We got it because of his mercies. Hallelujah! Did you need that like I needed that? Woo! Mm. I think I'm just going to feed on this for the rest of the day. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm just warning you again, there's going to be people around you. They're going to be all self-righteous and religious and say, you've messed up. You just don't deserve all this. You just keep on, like Brian Bartimaeus, just keep on saying, mercy, Lord, mercy. <laughs> have some faith in the mercy. <laughs> Disregard what they're saying and have some faith in the mercy. Let them gnash with their teeth, yeah. pine away, yeah. be jealous, yeah. you know, and just be mad and religious and all pruned up. You know how some people get religious all pruned up. And you just go on, and, and, and they, they, they get mad. See, the happier you get, the madder they get. <laughs> but you just let them, let them alone. Just leave them. You go on and be blessed. Hallelujah. I did it. I preached myself happy. I'm, thank God. Lift your hands and worship him. Somebody needs to receive some mercy right now. Just begin to call out on it. Mercy, Lord, I receive your mercy. Thank God for your mercy. Mercy over this area of my life. Mercy in my body. Mercy in my family. I've messed up my family. Mercy. Mercy on my marriage. I said that and I shouldn't have said it. It created a problem. Mercy, Father, give me mercy. I know you have mercies for me. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. I call for the blood of Jesus, for the power of the blood of Jesus, the mercy in the blood of Jesus, then I apply it to this situation. I say this thing, this thing will not put me in a hole that I won't get out of for the rest of my life. I'm up out of this place. I'm up out of this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I receive it. Hallelujah, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I didn't say I, I, I'm, I didn't say I've earned it. I'm saying I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. Anybody ever made bad financial decisions? I made one back well, I've made several, but I mean the one I'm thinking of back. 15 years ago maybe something like that I'd have to go back and look but and it it messed us up anybody know what I'm talking about and I got a call from a man <laughs> he started he started speaking mercy to me 
I, I don't want to go into all the details right now, but he just started saying mercy, some things about he wasn't, he, he was, I think he was a Christian man, but he wasn't quoting the Bible per se. He was just speaking mercy to me. And I was, I didn't really, you know, how many of you know you can be under the condemnation of something and don't even realize it so much? But he started speaking mercy to me. And uh, I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I had to get off the phone because I'm about to burst into tears. Because that was ministering to me so much, ministering to me so much. And I got off the phone and I said, Lord, that was you talking through that man. That was you talking through that man. Hallelujah. I think we're doing all right today. Glory to God. Thank God for mercy, 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 mercy. Falling like a blanket, falling like rain all across this room. And those that have the faith to reach up and say, Father, this bailout, this need, mercy I need in this area to bail me out, I receive it because you never run out. Hallelujah, you never run out. Thank you, Father. It's falling all across this room. It's falling all across this room. It's falling all across this room. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you for turnarounds now. Yes, some things that have been there for a long time, turning now turning now in the name of Jesus thank you for the dispatch of angels right now we thank you Father God for the anointing ministering to those situations right now thank you Father thank you Father thank you Father whatever it is we thank you that it's working mercy is working praise your name praise your name praise your name Praise your name. <clears throat> Praise your name. One of the things that can try to, I guess, bother you the most if you don't receive mercy is raising your children before you knew how to raise them and them not turning out right. You know what I mean? Thank God for mercy. You don't have to live under that cloud. You know that? Whew, glory be to God. I said, you don't have to live under that cloud. You can get the mercy of God and then start calling for mercy on their behalf. <laughs> Glory to God. We're not preaching being lax spiritually and not doing our part. We're just putting faith in this this morning. And we need it. How many of you know we're, 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 uh, we need faith in the Word. We need faith in His mercy. Hallelujah. Lift your hands again and thank God He's working on your behalf. He's working on your behalf. Working right now. Working on your behalf. In Jesus' name. And then whenever the manifestation of the mercy of God shows up, people say, how did that happen? You'll say, not without blood. Not without the mercy of God. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a good testimony, won't it? I think those are good. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe just as good a testimony as people who did the Word and it, it worked. Amen. Glory, to Glory to God. People see God whenever they see a manifestation of the mercy of God. Yes, and they can say, listen, I need that. Yes, sir. I need that. One of the greatest things you can say to somebody is, I find no fault in you. Because you forgave them. You know, anybody ever done you wrong? And they came and said, I messed up. Forgive me. Forgiveness looks at them and say, I forgive you, I release you, and I see no fault. I find no fault in you. It's as if it never happened. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. And people go, uh, you can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. And our relationship's the same as it was before that happened. Amen. I had a pastor friend of mine talked to me about some things, opportunities financially to invest. and It didn't all go like we had planned. <laughs> I'm not saying I, I you know, I, I'm learning to follow the Spirit. And I've got a lot of things working for me, but, you know, I wasn't as sharp back then. And he felt terrible. You know, he's the one that talked to me about it so forth. And I said, my decisions were my decisions. And I said, and this is a divine connection. And I said, this thing will not get between you and I. 
I said, don't you feel bad? I said, that was my decision, and my decision was my decision. I don't know why I'm saying this. Somebody needs this. In other words, he didn't, he didn't stranglehold me and tell me to put money in there. I chose to. I said, so that's the way I look at that, and that's the way I look at you. I said, There's, you, you have not done me wrong at all. You don't owe me anything, nothing. I said, we're not letting the devil get me. This is a divine connection. We're not letting the devil mess us up. Amen. And we have a good relationship today, just, just as if it never happened. Amen. Amen.